Hey guys, it's the Fujo Fairy here coming at you with another video for today's video. Oops, my necklace. I'm gonna be talking about um the currently releasing series Blood on the Tracks by Shujo Ashimi, the great Shujo Ashimi, one of my favorite mangas, and this is one of my favorite series that is currently being released. Um every time a manga uh, volume comes out, I read it right away and I enjoy it. It's so good. Um there's about five volumes out at the moment and it is just uh it's still going out i think it is mo it's his most current manga i could be wrong um but i'm pretty sure this is what he's writing at the moment and i'm loving it it is a psychological thriller um pretty much what he's really known for to be honest i feel like all his other er series are pretty similar he's written works like uh i have it over there flowers of evil happiness uh Inside Mari, and a bunch of other series. Definitely um, very well known within the manga community. Um, specifically, I think only in the manga community. I don't think any of his works have been, oh, except for Blood on Flowers of Evil, I think has an anime, but most people don't like it because of the, the art style that was used in it. Um, but either way, it is a great series. Anything that he writes, I really, really enjoy. I know not everyone likes his stuff because um, it, it starts out really good and then it gets a little bit weird toward the end but I think that's what I like about it most it gets a little bit weird and wonky and um I love it I love his weird shit um I feel like his stuff definitely stands out in the crowd and um Blood on the Tracks is no different it's amazing um I don't know how long the series is gonna be but I am enjoying it every every volume it just gets better and better um so i'm just gonna read the synopsis on the back of volume one and i'm gonna talk more about it so saichi's mother loves him very much and his days pass with placid uh regularity school friends even the attention of his attractive classmate classmate fukishi until one terrible summer day that all changes all right pretty like short synopsis the rest just talks about his flowers of evil and his creepy um just use Doshimi's work because they're always very unsettling um and it kind of creeps you out especially volume one I think volume one it's such a good introduction of to a series I think it might be one of my first my favorite like just first volume series like it starts out pretty simple they're like a little bit weird shit going on but you're just like mm, whatever i'm just gonna keep reading it and then once you get to the end you're like oh shit this is some serious ass shit so horror psychological thriller type series super well done saishi is our main character i'm gonna talk about three characters oh i'm gonna keep this pretty spoiler free so i'm not gonna go into two too much depth into what's going on um just like the basic um just the overlay so i'm just going to talk about the characters a little bit about my thoughts on the series and then um my overall overall rating of the first uh five volumes that i have and that i've read so the main character is seichi he is this guy um he's like third I'll show you a better this is not how he looks like now um I'll show you a better picture of him I think he's in middle school so he's like 12 or 13 something like that he's very young um and then he's the person that we follow just a normal kid um he's an only child and his mother um say Seiki Seiki his name her name is very similar to his um Seiki I think her name is um I don't remember exactly but that's his mother she looks like this she is a very overprotective mother I would say um I feel like if if you're kind of foreign like as a person who is I mean I'm not foreign but I, I'm first generation right so as a person who's first generation you kind of understand the overprotective parent the person who who loves you so so much but doesn't want you to to go out too much to you know you know they want to hold you tight and keep you their child forever especially since Aichi is turning 12 13 he is currently going through puberty right so he wants to hang out with his friends and um you know 
there's a girl that he likes who might like him back and you're he's just like you know just a normal 12 year old middle school kid that we all were at one point but his mother who is a little bit too overprotective at first you're like oh she's just like a normal ass like overprotective mother especially since he's an only child i guess you know he gets all the love because of that um and so you're like oh she just loves him a little bit too much but it's fine um whenever he wants to hang out with his friends she's like no your cousin's coming over you gotta hang out with your cousin honestly as a person like i said who's first generation um my parents are pretty like are pretty much kind of like that to be honest i had to hang out with my cousins a lot as a child um especially around this age um not i'm older i can do what i want but as a kid it was you know i could relate to him but his mother goes a little bit too far and she gets to the point where it's it's toxic it is too much too much love too much love you know it comes from a deep deep part in her that she loves her son so so much that she doesn't know how to act um certain parts in this series you notice that she might have something deeper going on with her in her um i'm just gonna keep it at that i don't want to go into too much because i don't want to ruin anything um this stuff is pretty obvious i think in certain parts um he sees his mother like crouching down uh talking to herself saying like certain words over and over and over over again so you could tell that his mother has some something going on within her she is the even though Seichi I get is is kind of the main character I feel like she is also a pretty big part of the story without her there is no story if that makes any sense um and she's a, such an interesting person and um you know not not the best mother I would say but she loves her son very much and she just doesn't know she doesn't know how to how to let go of her son now that he's getting older so those are the two main characters the other main character ish um she's not 100 percent main uh oops sorry my dog barking i feel like he barks in all of my videos he's really annoying but i love him you saw him in my last video he's kind of just like walking around i think somebody's coming or somebody's here i don't know what it is all right and so Sorry about that. I had to quiet him down. He's a little... Somebody was outside, so he's just barking at them. Oh, what was I talking about? I'm talking about the third main character-ish. I wouldn't say she's exactly a main character, but she does play a big role in this story, and that is Fu, uh, Fukishi, which is the love interest of Seiichi. She, um, she and Seiichi have this interesting relationship, um... It's very vague, especially in the beginning parts. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's very obvious that she has a crush on him. And it's very obvious that he has a crush on her. But, you know, they're both 12-year-olds. They're still learning about themselves. And they're just being cute about it. Um, the mother does not like this very much. For obvious reasons. Like I said, she's very overprotective. And she loves her son a little bit too much. And she doesn't want anyone to take him away from her um so she's pretty uh she's pretty interesting um as the series go goes on especially in volume four and five you learn more about her and um you start realizing that she may not be she may not be the best girl for him she seems she's a lot to her and um i hopefully we get to learn more about her because um, here is a picture picture of her. This is what she looks like. She's so cute. Um, hopefully we'll learn more about her because there's some things about her that the way she talks and just like certain things, the way she interacts with her parents or her dad and stuff, you know, there's something there too as well. And I think the reason that she is attracted to Seiichi is because she sees in him the same, mm, I don't know if it would be pain but the same trauma the similar trauma so i'm guessing that they have something in common in that reason for her being attracted to him so those are the three main ish characters 
um there's the i mean seichi's mom is married to a guy but he's like useless um he definitely does not take care of his wife well enough he's always working and he's there every once in a while in the series um but it's very obvious that he's not the best father or best husband because i wouldn't say he's not a good father to say but he's not the best husband and um you know kind of goes from there so like i said i don't want to go too much into detail so i'm not going to talk any more about the story i'm just going to go into my thoughts and um just how much i am enjoying this series the art for this is phenomenal it is amazing um i just showed you a couple pages i mean if you've read any of his works of uh, shuzo shimi's work you already know um a lot of his his um his stuff is very um it's not text heavy so it's very quick reads and not just that it's the way it's drawn portrays a lot of emotions um just look at this part is i mean spoiler ish not really i'm not you don't know the context um this is seichi having almost like a panic attack and you can and there's no words on these and there's a lot of pages just like this there's zero words on this and you could see his vision like just starting to blur up i think the next page shows more of it hold on no it doesn't i'm just not gonna i'm not gonna change the page because it shows like a spoiler um but you could just see the way his vision just changes because he starts to panic and have like almost a physical attack like not knowing what to do um what is going on um shujo Oshimi does this a lot within this manga especially in the beginning um it's just oh it's so good it's honestly amazing like when i it like gives you goosebumps you know what i mean because they're like you almost like feel what seichi is feeling just from looking at the pages rather than reading the words which makes shujo Zasimi's work so well done in my opinion not a lot of mangakas can do that a lot of people over you know i know especially in like shonen type manga a lot of people complain about the oversharing like there's a lot of dialogue to overshare what's going on and stuff like that this is quite literally the opposite you have to look into the details of what's going on um to catch on little things that shujo shimi does put into his story and just to feel what the character is feeling i mean i think shujo shimi has mastered the art of telling a story without a lot of words if that makes any sense but unfortunately because of the fact that he doesn't really um have a lot of dialogue in his works um it's very quick reads um you can read a volume in a day almost less i mean not a day you can read it in a couple like a couple minutes it doesn't take very long to read it takes like maybe 10 15 minutes to read a whole volume and that sucks especially when a volume costs how much is it 12.95 retail price um that's a lot of money and um so i understand if somebody doesn't really want to buy it um because of that fact they're like oh it's you know it's almost 13 dollars, and you can read it in like 15 20 minutes um and I understand that could be definitely a downside of the series, um, but personally, I love Shujo Shimi so much, like his work so much. And you know, if you pick up this first volume, like just pick up the first volume if you think you're not gonna enjoy it. And then after you read this, I know for a fact you're gonna want to get to go out and buy the rest of it because it's just so good. It's like it's hard to put down. You know, certain scenes will like give you goosebumps like it's just that good like it's so i don't know i just really like the series a lot it's definitely up there one of my favorites um it's not over it's just coming out right now so i'm not gonna say it's like the best manga i've ever read um but it, once it's finished and if it's going the way that it has been going these last few volumes like it'll definitely be up there in one of my favorite mangas of all time um and yeah that's kind of all i really want to talk about um definitely give it a check uh give it a read if you're interested um you know 
look for sales if the price is a little too much for you um if you already know that you're gonna like it i recommend buying the whole thing like i said um all the volumes that are available one through five um so that you can sit and read it like just in one shot like in an hour just sit down and just read the whole thing and um you'll definitely uh enjoy it for sure especially if you're into these types of psychological thriller uh, manga or if you if you like any of Shujo Shimi's other works as well um he's he's a uh, very well known mangaka so so yeah that's all I really gotta say I hope you guys enjoy it I give this series a solid 9 out of 10 I love this series so much um and I just can't get enough of it so have a great day and I will see you around bye